Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are back with the ses afternoon session of uh, day three, and it will be by Dr. Sneha Sharma on the topic photonic crystal fibers and its application. Now, I request Professor Sapna to introduce our speaker to the participant. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now, uh, the, the speaker will be Dr. Sneha Sharma. Uh, Dr. Sneha Sharma is currently working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Jayanand Sagar University. She completed her PhD from IIT ISM Dhanbad. Her field of research is photonic crystal fiber and its non-linear optical applications. Ma'am published her several research articles in SCI journals and international conferences and continued to publish more. So I, uh, I am happy to introduce Neha Sharma to all of you. Kindly, uh, ma'am, over to you. Please uh, start the presentation, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Uh, thank you, Sapna, ma'am, and Nandu. And hello, sir. My name is uh, Dr. Sneha Sharma. And today I am going to present topic photonic crystal fibers and its applications. So. This is the outline of today's presentation. First, I'll go with the introduction of photonic crystal fiber. The next, guiding mechanism of photonic crystal fiber. Third is fabrication method, properties of photo photonic crystal fiber. Next, applications of photonic crystal fiber as optical logic gate. Then, supercontinuum generation in photonic crystal fiber. And next, we will see photonic crystal fiber based sensors. So. First is the introduction. So, photonic crystal fiber, it is made up of 2D photonic crystal with an air core and it was invented by Philip Russell. And photonic crystal fiber, it is a new class of optical fiber. These fibers are also called as microstructured optical fiber or holy fibers. So, here in the figure, it is showing one first figure, it is the conventional optical fiber. Second one, it is the solid core photonic crystal fiber. And third one, it is the hollow core photonic crystal fiber. So, we all know optical fibers transmit information in the form of short optical pulses over long distances at a very high speed. And it has become an integral part of the global telecommunication network. And they are also used for non-telecom uh, applications such as sensing, machining and diagnostic and beam delivery for medicine, astronomy and in a lot of other fields. So conventional optical fibers, these are the optical waveguides consisting of the cylindrical glass core with high refractive index surrounded by a cladding material having a slightly lower index of refraction than the core. So due to this index contrast, confinement of light in the core can occur by total internal reflection and photonic crystal fiber it is another kind of uh, optical fiber here the ability to structure materials on the scale of the optical wavelength allows the development of new optical materials known as photonic crystals so photonic crystals rely on regular morphological microstructure incorporated into the material to radically alter its optical properties and these materials are investigated in two and three dimensional and planar geometries and it is a new type of optical fiber which is formed by using these materials. So photonic crystals can be incorporated into the cladding of an optical fiber and such fibers are known as photonic crystal fibers which depends on the unusual properties of the photonic crystals. So this is a new class of single material optical fiber technology where the core and the cladding are made of the same material. For example, we can take pure silica. So the cladding region contains air holes which runs along the entire length of the fiber. Here the light transmission characteristics of conventional fiber is defined by the material properties of the core and cladding whereas in a PCF, the PCF means it is photonic crystal fiber in short I will say PCF. So whereas in PCF the structural arrangement creates an internal microstructure 
which offers another dimension of light control in the fiber. So this PCF differs from conventional optical fibers and deliver previously unimaginable performance from an optical fiber waveguide. It has artificial crystal-like microstructure which can result in a number of unusual properties. So the light guidance mechanism of PCF it is determined by the size and spacing of the holes in the microstructure and the refractive index of its constituent material. So based on the guiding mechanism, this PCF or photonic crystal fiber, it is further divided into two types that is solid core photonic crystal fiber and hollow core photonic crystal fiber. Now I'll move to the guidance mechanism of this PCF. So this is the solid core PCF or it is called as the index guiding PCF. It has a solid core surrounded by the rectangle, um, surrounded by this regular pattern of air holes. So the internal periodic structure of PCF, it is made up of capillaries and it is filled with air. So to propagate light along the core of the fiber, a central solid defect region is realized by removing the central capillary. So solid core PCF guides light in a similar way to total internal reflection in conventional fiber. That means it guides light through the modified total internal reflection it is called modified because here uh, hello nandini ma'am is it visible screen is visible hello nandini ma'am hello is it audible yes ma'am is it audible? Yes, ma'am. It's perfectly audible. Uh, screen also is coming? Yes, ma'am. It's perfect. Oh, okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So, it is uh, uh, light guidance in the index core photonic crystal fiber. It is by modified total internal reflection. It is called modified because there are air holes in the cladding which reduces the refractive index of the uh, cladding. Uh, again, the refractive index will change with respect to the wavelength. So, that is why it is also called a modified total internal reflection. So, here this PCF provides enhanced design flexibility compared to the standard optical fiber by just changing the size, arrangement, shape and distance between the air holes. So, it can give many unique optical properties such as it can give endlessly single mode operation at all wavelengths then we can control the dispersion by refringence value also of the fiber we can control it can give large mode area and high numerical aperture it can give very high optical non-linearity value which will be very useful for non-linear optical applications so um, next i'll move uh, to the next type of pcf that is the photonic band gap fibers or hollow core fibers so these photonic band gap fibers are one of the most exciting features of the PCF technology with no counterpart in conventional fiber. So in this type of fiber, the refractive index of the core is lower than the refractive index of the cladding. So the guidance through the total internal reflection is not possible here. So here this type of fiber can guide light in a hollow or air core is core is the hollow or it is the air. So in this type of fiber, total internal reflection cannot happen. So uh, this core, because this core is made of a material with a refractive index lower than that of the cladding and it guides light through the photonic band gap effect. So photonic band gap guidance, it is similar to the electronic band gap in semiconductors which is a forbidden zone of energies that electrons cannot occupy. So this type of fiber consists of hollow cores surrounded by the periodic structure of air holes in the cladding and light at a certain frequency band that falls within the photonic band gap is not allowed to propagate out through the cladding and it is confined in the core of the fiber. So hollow core photonic crystal fibers are the most technological advanced two-dimensional photonic band gap structure with very 
लो ट्रांसमिशन लॉस इट्स ट्रांसमिशन लॉस विल बी वेरी लो वाई बिकॉज मोस्टली द लाइट आर ट्रेवल आर प्रोपागेटिंग इन द एयर नॉट थ्रू एनी मेटेरियल देयर फोर द ट्रांसमिशन लॉस विल बी वेरी लेस कंपेयर टू द कन्वेंशनल ऑप्टिकल fiber and the second figure it is another type of hollow core pcf it is also called as the kagom lattice hollow core pcf it consists of a fine silica webs arranged in a kagom lattice and surrounded by air it allows ultra broadband guidance and has a relatively higher transmission loss in comparison with a band gap or local pcf so again these are the two types of the photonic band gap fibers so these hollow core pcf have unique features such as small non linearity low loss and possibility of filling the core region with various gases or liquids you can fill this core region with various gases or liquids so that whenever the light is propagating through this core this type of fiber can act as a sensor so this is one of the application of this photonic band gap fibers so this is about the guiding mechanism and next i will move to the next slide that is the different types of the pca so already i have told so there are two classes that is high index core fibers and photonic band gap fibers high index core where the core is the solid and photonic band gap fiber where the core is the hollow or air core again depending upon the geometry of the structure it is further divided into high numerical aperture photonic crystal fiber large mode area pcf highly non linear pcf and Uh, under the photonic band gap fibers again depending upon the geometry it is further divided into low index core photonic band gap fibers hollow core photonic band gap fibers and bragg fiber so depending upon the application we can use various types of pca next i'll move for, to the fabrication method of the uh, photonic crystal fiber so pcs uh, these are the four stages this is the fabrication method technique so first stage it is the creation of the individual capillaries so here uh, in the first step these individual capillaries are created and these capillaries with different diameters and wall thickness having different cross section like circular hexagonal square which type of uh, air shape we want to take we can Uh, here make different individual capillaries and different types of glasses also can be used so first step is the creation of the individual capillaries and next is these individual capillaries are positioned together to make a multi capillary preform with the required symmetry and the defect in which light propagates is a glass rod or in the case of fibers with a photonic band gap a hole with a suitable diameter is prepared so these defect rods are positioned in the structure a structure will so prepared is then fused in is then fused and drawn with a fiber drawing tower to a millimeter scale and usually named an intermediate preform so third stage is the preparation of the uh, intermediate preform and the last stage so this intermediate preform is then fused and drawn again with a fiber drawing tower to a final fiber with micrometer scale structure so finally extra layers of polymer are usually added in the final stage to create a coating protecting the fiber mechanically so these are the various stages so first is the creation of individual capillaries second assembly of capillaries to the desired structure third one preparation of the intermediate preform and the fourth one is drawing of the final fiber and then we will get the micro structured fiber so the here fabrication technique is similar to how the fabrication for conventional optical fiber but the main challenge here is the capillary stacking and hole dimensions also has to maintain all along the fiber and this preform is heated here uh, to soften the silica glass and the resulting preform is reduced to fiber dimensions using conventional fiber drawing technique so this is about the fabrication method
So next we'll move to the properties of the photonic crystal fiber. So the most important design parameters are the air hole diameter and the pitch. So in the PCF, it provides high flexibility in tailoring these two parameters and lead to unique optical properties of PCFs, which are unachievable in conventional optical fibers. So these are the uh, so these are the sum of the properties. Uh, it gives adjustable dispersion, broad band, single mode guidance, third high birefringence bi value, large or ultra small effective area, high nonlinearity, etc. So many physical properties uh, we can engineer in the PCA by just changing the dimension, lattice structure, etc. Here, so here this speech it means the distance between the two air holes. And D, it is showing the diameter of the core, and small d, it is showing the diameter of the small circular air holes. So, waveguide dispersion can be engineered to have the zero dispersion wavelength at any desired wavelength, which will be useful for many nonlinear applications where normal dispersion is a limiting factor. So, this type of fiber. We can engineer to have any kind of dispersion, whether in visible range we want zero dispersion wavelength, mid infrared range. Uh, so, depending on the glass, which glass we are using for the fiber, and depending upon the fiber geometry, we can change the properties of the fiber. So, here, this type of fibers we can generally uh, use for super continuum generation, high power lasers sensors, polarization sensitive devices and gas based fiber devices. Next I'll move to the applications of the photonic crystal fiber. Uh, first I'll just uh, uh, this slide I'll show you uh, the optical properties of the PCA. Uh, we have designed uh, the photonic crystal fiber to just study how the properties of the PCF is changing. So here, uh, this is the cross-section view of the proposed PCF. It is a solid core PCF and uh, we have designed the PCF using console multiphysics software based on finite element method. So this is the first ring of air holes near the core region it is infiltrated with liquid analyte having different refractive index and then we have studied the different linear and non-linear optical properties of the ECF when the first ring of air holes are filled with different refractive index of angle so this uh, second figure this figure it is showing the electric field distribution of the fundamental mode at 1550 nanometer so this is the transverse cross section of the pcf and this proposed structure it consists of five rings of air holes arranged in a triangular lattice pattern and the glass we have taken it is silica glass background material it is the silica and these are the air holes and these blue dotted uh, uh, holes are the analyte having different refractive index we have filled here so here we have taken the distance between the air hole is is taken as 1.5 micrometer and diameter of the air holes is taken as 0.6 micrometer so this uh, from the console uh, we can get the effective refractive index value so this graph it is showing how the effective refractive index is changing with respect to the wavelength how it is decreasing with the wavelength so why it is decreasing with the wavelength is because as the wavelength will be increasing the light which, which is confined in the core region will try to spread out of the uh, core and it will spread in the Cladding. That means the effective refractive index is becoming, uh, is decreasing. That means the con there is a confinement loss whenever we are increasing the wavelength. So there will be a loss in the, uh, in the fiber. And therefore the effective index uh, will decrease with respect to the um, wavelength. 
so effective mode index of the fundamental mode it is calculated by the finite element method using the console multiple physics software and here uh, next uh, from the effective refractive index we can calculate the dispersion of the pcf so here the dispersion how to calculate the dispersion it is given by this equation so dispersion characteristics of the pcf it is given by minus of lambda by c where lambda is the wavelength is the velocity of the light and this is uh, real part of the effective refractive index so second order differentiation of this real part of this effective refractive index with respect to the wavelength so this is the equation to calculate the dispersion characteristics so once we get the effective mode index we can easily calculate the dispersion characteristics of the uh, fiber so this is uh, showing how the dispersion characteristic it is changing when we are filling the first ring of uh, air holes with different analytes so this black graph it is showing the air whose refractive index is equals to one next how it is the changing when we are just changing the refractive index value from 1.33 1.41 and 1.55 so like this the pcf can also act as a refractive index sensor also so uh, here uh, this next we have calculated the uh, effective area non linear coefficient v parameter and confinement loss so it is just uh, showing how easy it is to just find the properties of the pcf by just changing its uh, either you we can change the air hole parameters or we can change uh, or we can fill the air holes with some analyte and can change the properties of the pcf so how to calculate the non linear coefficient value it is given by n2 omega not by c effective where n2 it is the non linear refractive index of the glass so this n2 value will change with respect to the glass whatever the glass we are using to design the fiber so here c is again the speed of the light in vacuum and omega not is the center frequency and the effective area is calculated by this equation where e is the electric field in the medium and v parameter is very important which will uh find like whether the fiber is uh, in the single mode fiber will operate in the single mode or multi mode so for pcf if the v parameter value is greater than 3.14 in the fiber uh will provide multi mode path and here we can see this proposed design here the fiber is acting like a single mode fiber in the wavelength range from 1 to 2 micrometer and how is showing for the different analyte how the values are changing so this is the confinement loss confinement loss it is depending upon the structure and it will change with respect to the wavelength so how to calculate the confinement loss so from the imaginary value of the effective refractive index we can calculate the confinement loss of the fiber so confinement loss uh it means like when the light when we are increasing the wavelength the light will try to spread uh, spread out of the core and it goes into the cladding region and therefore the confinement loss will increase whenever we are increasing the wavelength so here uh it is giving uh for 1.8 micrometer wavelength it is giving a confinement loss of 0.01 db per meter and uh, like in single mode uh, or conventional optical fibers we know the the loss is nearly 0.17 db per kilometer so by properly designing the photonic crystal fiber we can make it as a single mode fiber and confinement loss also we can reduce it and we can use it for many applications for telecom as well as for non telecom applications also we can use this type of fibers so this is about the optical properties of the photonic crystal fiber how we can design proper uh, properly pcf based on the uh, applications so next i'll show you uh, one application that is all optical logic gate based on the non linear optical loop mirror so here 
we know ultra fast all optical logic gate it is believed to be an important component in future optical data processing system so the logic gate operation it is realized through the non linear optical loop mirror where this photonic crystal fiber it is used as a non linear element here so the input how this works is here we have given the input signal pulses a and b at wavelength lambda 2 and it is given into the loop via the wdm coupler as clockwise and anti clockwise traveling pulses so here this is the probe data pulse at different wavelength lambda 1 it is coming from port 1 of the io coupler and this is the 50 is to 50 50 io coupler and this input this probe pulse is split into two equal amplitude pulses into the ports 3 and 4 as clockwise and counter clockwise pulses in the non linear optical loop mirror so in the absence of any signal pulses any signal pulse a and b the clockwise and counter clockwise probe pulse undergo exactly the same phase shift after traveling the fiber loop so when no pulse is transmitted from port 2 and so no pulse will be transmitted from port 2 if there is the same phase shift between this clockwise and counter clockwise probe pulses and so there will be it will be completely reflected into the port 1 now suppose if any of these clockwise and anti clockwise probe pulses undergoes a different phase shift compared to each other then the pulse will be tr partially transmitted from port 2 and uh when the phase difference between these two probe pulses is equals to pi that time the pulses are completely transmitted from port 2 so to realize the xor and x0 logic gate operation here both the signals we have taken that is signal a and signal b so suppose if the signal a is present then the this counter uh this clockwise probe pulse will co propagate with this signal a and there is cross phase modulation will occur between them so this counter clockwise probe pulse will acquire an additional phase shift due to the cross phase modulation effect whereas this counter clockwise probe pulse will not uh, get phase shift suppose if the signal b is absent so as a result there will be a phase difference between these two clockwise and counter clockwise probe pulses and then the pulse will be transmitted from port 2 so the transmitted pulse will be uh, our xor output and the reflected uh, pulse here will be the x0 output so this is how this non linear optical loop mirror will work and if we can properly design the pcf with very high non linearity value and the dispersion graph also if we make very negligible then we can properly reduce the size of the device so this is one proposed design where the first ring of air holes the dimension is reduced compared to all the diameter of the outer air holes so and uh, uh, here we can see based on this design these are the different dispersion graphs we got so here we have considered the uh, distance between the air holes is 0.9 micrometer we have taken and diameter uh, this d2 that is the larger air hole it is taken as 0.81 micrometer and the diameter of this inner holes are taken different diameters we have taken that is 0.27.36.54 so here uh, in this particular configuration we have taken this proposed pcf uh, properties with a length of only 3 meter so this initial probe and signal pulse width are also taken as 50 femtosecond and 150 femtosecond so this is the simulation result of the xor and x0 logic gate operation it is showing and to avoid the spectral overlap between this probe pulse and signal pulse we have considered their wavelength at 1550 nanometer and 1420 nanometer so this is 
the graph of the dispersion of this proposed PCF, it is showing how the dispersion value it is becoming flattened when we are changing the dimension of the air hole. So here we can see the PCF with a diameter D1 of 0.36 micrometer has dispersion value of about only plus minus 0.5 ecosecond per kilometer nanometer from 1420 to 1550 nanometer in this graph. So this type of PCF design we can use in uh, this type of operation, logic gate operation to reduce the gate size. And this is the simulation uh, result. So practically when we are doing, we can get uh, many difficulties. And first I'll show you the um, comparison, the comparison of our proposed logic gate operation with other current schemes. So we have compared with the other reported lecture, uh, reported work that is uh, here we can compare like uh, our proposed work it is here the fiber length is just 3 meter whereas in the other work we can see the fiber length it is 380 meter, 1000 meter, 60 meter even in kilometer. So this is also using PCF and these are using the conventional single mode fiber and the data rate also it has been increased from 40 here it is 40 10 gigabit per second and we have used in 1 terabit per second and extension ratio we can see the extension ratio also it is 9.5 dB, dB uh, as compared to the other reported work so what is that extension ratio extension ratio it is given by 10 log p out 1 by p out naught where p out 1 is the output power when the logic output is level 1 and p out naught is the output power when the logic output is at level 0 so using the highly nonlinear pcf with flattened dispersion of length only 3 meter can it can improve the logic gate performance and it presents the compactness by reducing the gate size. So this is one of the advantage of PCF. We can design the PCF such highly nonlinear PCF which can uh, reduce the gate size. So this is one of the nonlinear application of the photonic crystal fiber. So the main problems which will arise when we will be doing practically so there can be number of difficulties it can arise such as uh, losses losses can be arise because of splicing and coupling losses so the total loss of the PCF which has been reported till now the coupling and splicing losses are 3.3 to 4.7 dB so it would be essential to scale up the input power to take care of the losses and next there is an experimental challenge while implementing the high speed logic gate operation is the timing jitter between the probe and signal bit stream can introduce unacceptable bit error rate at the output of the device. So this is a simulation which is showing uh, when the signal pulses are not synchronized. So we can see the here at the XOR operation the for logic bit 0 how the noise has been increased because the signals are not synchronized. So when the timing jitter is increased, that means when the synchronization uh, between the signal pulses, when the signal pulse is not synchronized with the probe pulse, that time we can see how the extension ratio is decreases. So that means your uh, performance can degrade. So here the uh, there have been several attempts for reducing the synchronization of the ultra short laser pulses and below 10 femtosecond also it is reported. So we can see at 10 femtosecond the extension ratio is 7 dB. So which is acceptable as compared to the other reported works. And next uh, problems which can arise is the uh, noise. So here the performance of the logic gate due to the additive Gaussian noise in the incoming signal we have taken in the simulation. So we can see so how the noise is affecting the signals. So here the noise is reducing for logic bit 1 in the XOR operation here because this nonlinear optical loop mirror has strong noise rejection ability. So here we can see... So here we can see the number of problems which can arrive 
uh, while we are implementing this uh, practically so here also when the uh, how it is changing the output extension ratio how it is changing when the optical signal to noise ratio is increasing Uh, so we can see the when the optical signal to noise ratio is 50 dB, the extension ratio is maximum, and it is nearly 4.5 dB when the optical signal to noise ratio is 4. So as the signal to noise ratio we are maximizing optical signal to noise ratio, then our uh, logic gate operation is uh, its extension ratio also is increasing. and the operation is minimizing whenever there is a noise so that 4.5 db extension ratio when the optical signal to noise ratio is 10 db that is also uh, acceptable as compared to the reported work see here 2 db also they have reported so at the op so at this 10 db the we are getting a extension ratio of 4. 5 dB and this is the eye diagram for the input and output signal it is showing when the optical si and signal to noise ratio is 50 dB which is clearly showing like we can differentiate the output that is whether it is logic 1 or logic 0 so next application will move towards is the super continuum generation so super continuum generation is one of uh, important application of the photonic crystal fiber so super continuum generation it is the formation of broad continuous spectra by propagation of high power pulses through non linear medium so this super continuum generation it occurs when a high power ultra short optical pulses propagates through a non linear optical medium so here we see here this is the narrow band input at the fiber side and output it is the broad band output so this blue color it is showing the source and this is the continuum super continuum generation we, which we are getting at the output of the fiber so it means whenever a high power ultra short optical pulses propagates through a non linear optical medium it goes uh, it undergoes extreme non linear spectral broadening process to yield a broad band spectrally continuous output so there are various processes in super continuum generation such as soliton breakup cell phase modulation cell stiffening effect intrapulse raman scattering dispersive wave generation due to higher order dispersion so higher the non linearity value of the wave guide the super continuum generation will require a minimum length of the fiber so this is one of the good property of the pcf we can reduce the size of the pcf to get a super continuum generation so this super continuum generation it is very important so for many application it is required like uh, so this super continuum source it provides ultra broad band white light spectrum single mode beam characteristics excellent quanting stability and high brightness and this type of source it is very required for high resolution imaging such as optical coherence tomography and early cancer detection then ultra short pulse generation then for designing of multi wavelength sources optical frequency metrology spectroscopy biophotonics etc so these are all the applications of the super continuum generation which we can realize using this photonic crystal fiber by reducing the size of the pcf we can reduce the dimension of the device also so next we'll move for the uh, photonic crystal fiber based sensor so we know pcf based sensor it has become the focus of many research group due to their high sensitivity flexibility small size robustness and that they can be used in many unfavorable situations so we can use this in a very hazardous and noisy environment or high temperature high voltage high electromagnetic field and in explosive environments even for the purpose of remote sensing so based on the physical parameters we can 
either sense temperature, pressure, strain, twist, torsion, curvature, bend, anything using the photonic crystal fiber. So these are the various type of PCF sensor in different application we can use it for medical diagnostic, biomedical imaging, glucose monitoring, environmental monitoring, disease detection, telemedicine, chemical sensing, organic chemical sensing, then lab on chip. These are the different applications of the PCF as sensors. So we have done one that is chemical sensors based on dual core photonic crystal fiber. So here we have proposed here we have proposed a PCF based sensor, uh, PCF based chemical sensor. A chemical sensor based on dual core PCF is designed here using the Comsol physics software. So this is the dual core PCF. We can see here. This is the cross section view of the dual core PCF sensor. And in this structure, these two air holes here, two air holes we have removed and it is forming two pores in the PCF. So this is the central air hole which is separating these two pores of the fiber is filled with different chemicals. We can fill with different chemicals here. For example, I have taken here benzene, ethanol and water which has having different refractive index values. So here the diameter of the air holes, diameter of these air holes and pitch that is the distance between the air holes it is taken as 1.4 and 2 micrometer respectively. So which is preferred for, which is preferred for uh, <coughs> different, uh, which is preferred for many applications due to its lower confinement loss. Uh, so these values will give very low confinement loss. Here the refractive index of the air hole it is taken as 1 and the background material which is a few silica its refractive index can be taken using the Selmier equation. So according to the coupling mode theory the dual core PCF is having four modes in the xy polarization that is xy even and odd mode. So the four modes uh, of this proposed fiber sensor it is analyzed here using the console multiphysics software and their distribution of electric field it is shown in this figure. So this figure A it is showing the electric field distribution for X polarization odd mode, this is X polarization even mode and this is the Y polarization odd and even mode. So these arrow diagrams inside the pole shows the electric field distribution for all the four even and odd modes. Again the coupling length, coupling length it is an important parameter for the dual core PCF which represents the periodic variation of energy transformed from one core to another core. So the coupling length it is defined by this equation L is equals to um, lambda by 2 n e i minus n naught i where n e i and n naught i are the effective refractive index for i polarized odd and even mode respectively. So this is showing the variation of the effective refractive index difference with respect to the different wavelength for different chemical values like for benzene, ethanol and water, it is showing how the refractive index uh, it is changing with respect to the wavelength. And this is the figure, it is showing the coupling length of the dual core PCF when the central air hole is filled with different chemicals at different wavelengths. So when the wavelength is increasing, the confinement of light will be poor in the core region and it tends to spread out in the cladding and so the refractive index will decrease for all the modes here, for all the fundamental modes and hence the effective refractive index difference also will increase with wavelength. So therefore the coupling length which is the function of this effective refractive index will decrease with respect to the wavelength. So minimizing the coupling length uh, is good as it is uh, mentioning coupling length means uh, 
how it is coupling the uh, input power from one pole to another pole. So in this way, the coupling length is reducing. We can reduce the size of the fiber. And then this is uh, showing the transmission curve, transmission curve of the dual core PCF, which is sinusoidal in nature. So according to mode couple theory, the optical power is transferred from one core to another core in dual core PCF after the coupling length L, which is given by this equation that is P, which is a function of wavelength lambda is equals to sine square n e minus a naught, that is the distance between the effective reflective index in even and odd mode into pi into L by lambda. So, this is the calculated transmission spectra curve for X polarized mode of proposed dual core PCF sensor using a length of only 0.5 centimeter. So, the transmission curve, uh, it is a transmission curve for various chemicals which have has filled in the center pole that is with benzene, ethanol and water. Now, we have calculated the sensitivity from this transmission uh, curve of this dual core PCF. The sensitivity of the sensor it is calculated by this equation that is delta lambda peak by delta n. So sensitivity of the sensor is calculated by shift of the transmission peaks with variation of the ref different refractive index of chemicals where this delta lambda peak it signifies shift in the transmission curve and delta n a it stands for the change in the chemical refractive index. So the numerical calculation it shows that the proposed dual core PCF it gives the sensitivity of 9615 nanometer per refractive index unit with a length of only 0.5 centimeter. So this is the comparison with the other reported work. So this paper it is the uh, sensor which is showing the sensitivity of 7300 nanometer and next it is 8500 nanometer per refractive index unit and in the third paper also is using the 1000 it is getting a sensitivity of 1179 nanometer per uh, refractive index unit so this is the comparison of our proposed work with the other reported work and the length uh, we have used here of the PCF is just 0.5 centimeter so in this way we can use the photonic crystal fiber as a chemical sensor gas sensor or any uh, other uh, refractive index sensor also we can use and next i'll move for the hydrostatic one more application that is hydrostatic pressure sensor based on this dual core pcf so this is the figure which is showing how the pcf can be used to measure the hydrostatic pressure so for uh, this uh, here also we have used this dual core pcf only so the main operation of this uh, of this dual core pcf here the sensing it will be based on the photoelastic effect and the coupling of modes between two cores of pcf is sensitive to the applied pressure so here at the input this is the light source which we are inserting at the fiber and here we are applying the hydrostatic pressure so based on this pressure the guidance of the light in the pcf will change and its effective refractive mode index also will change so based on that we can use the fiber as a hydrostatic pressure sensor so this pcf it is designed using the console multiphysics again and here the stress components and uh, change in refractive index of your silica under hydrostatic pressure from 0 to 1000 megapascal it is evaluated and the effect of hydrostatic pressure on peak wavelength of transmission spectrum output uh, of this PCF is also investigated when output light is inserted at the input side of the fiber. So next it is showing the coupling length which is very important again how the coupling length is changing when we are just changing the diameter of the circular air hole. So in this way we can minimize the coupling length by changing the geometry of the structure 
and it is showing how the confinement loss is reducing by changing the dimension of the air holes and by changing the distance between the air holes. So by properly designing the photonic crystal fiber, we can minimize the coupling length, we can minimize the confinement loss. And this figure, it is showing again the transmission uh, graph of the PCF when we are applying the pressure from 0 to 1 gigapascal. So here, uh, for practical application, the input side of this PCF will be connected to the broadband light source where the light will be inserted into the core of the fiber and the uh, output side is connected to the optical spectrum analyzer to detect the light from the second core of the fiber. Uh, so this is the transmission spectrum at the peak wavelength of where the output power is 1. It is showing that, out, that the peak wavelength uh, and it is entire optical power is transferred from one core to another core. So, uh, this is showing when the hydrostatic pressure of from 0 uh, 100 to about 1000 megapascal it is applied to only a 6 cm long dual core PCA and we have analyzed the output spectrum of this transmission. So this output transmission spectrum it shows that hydrostatic pressure from 0 to 1000 megapascal the peak wavelength is shifting towards the left. So when we concentrate on the uh, on the wavelength peak around 1555 nanometer, the relation between wavelength peak and the applied pressure um, pressure is linear, which is shown in this figure. Pressure with respect to the peak wavelength shift, we can see the relation is linear. So, as we are increasing the pressure from 0 to 1000 megapascal, we can see the peak wavelength is decreasing. It is moving towards the left. Right? So, there is a linear relation between this pressure and this peak wavelength and by using this relation, we can calculate the sensitivity of this hydrostatic pressure sensor. So, it is giving us um, a sensitivity of our proposed work it is minus 11.6 picometer per mega pascal which we have compared with the other reported results so this is the dual core pca for hydrostatic pressure sensing it is giving a sensitivity of minus 3.47 picometer and the length used here is 10 centimeter and the sensing range is from 0 to 1000 mega pascal and next reported work, it is giving minus 19. The length is 20 centimeter. The sensing range is from 0 to 45 megapascal. Third one, it is giving a sensitivity of minus 0.26 nanometer per megapascal with a sensor length of 20 centimeter. So this is the comparison with the other reported work. So this. Uh, is some example how we can design the photonic crystal fiber properly for depending upon the various applications. So many applications are there like for nonlinear optical application, it is super continuum generation, high power laser delivery. These are the nonlinear optical application and again on the sensor side also we can use the PCF. So these are my references. Thank you. If any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for the wonderful Thank session. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, we have some questions, ma'am. So the first question is by Subramaniam. He is uh, asking about um, exactly where do we use his uh, PCF and uh, whether uh, we have to take care of the S parameters as we do in the transmission line. No, here uh, PCF generally, like I already told, for like nonlinear optical applications, if you want to use, uh, we can use for super continuum generation. Again, various applications of super continuum generation I have shown that is optical coherence tomography. In various medical applications, we can use, and uh, in sensors also we can use. And here we don't have to calculate S parameters. The optical properties only we have to calculate. That is the dispersion. 
like normal conventional optical fibers how parameters are there it is just a fiber we have to find the nonlinear value uh, we have to find the dispersion value effective area value all these parameters we have to calculate okay one more question ma'am from rajini what is the cost of pcf hello yeah uh, one more question from rajini ma'am Yes, what is the cost of PCF? Is it readily available as a normal optic fiber? It is available, but to PCF fiber, it is very costly, and fabrication also it is very costly. Like for one centimeter, it will cost you around one lakh. It is very costly still now. It is the technology; it is in development. Okay, okay, ma'am. One more uh, question. Um, uh what is the software you have used and uh, what is the software cost it's by rajaratnam software it is a comsol multi physics based finite any element method i have used and this is not free version of software we have to purchase it it will cost you around 6 lakhs okay 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 so those are the questions ma'am so we have got lots of compliments for uh, your presentation um extremely thankful for uh, sparing your time with us ma'am thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you nandini yeah um so we are at the end of the session i thank all the participants for uh, bearing with us for the past 3 uh, days session 1 we had uh, from dr mandeep singh dr vaibhavyam and uh, dr payal verma and uh, day 2 we had with uh, dr preeta sharan and dr shrikant pc from malad college of engineering and uh, day 3 uh, by dr sudipta mukopadhyay and we ended with dr sneha sharma's uh, presentation i thank you everyone and uh, especially i thank our chairman Dr. Vibha Vem for uh, giving us the opportunity to conduct FDP, online FDP. Uh, it's really a platform for us to learn. Also, I thank our uh, dean, Dr. A. Srinivas, our vice chancellor, Dr. K. N. B. Muthi, and all the management people for giving us a better platform to learn. Also, showcase our talent. Thank you, everyone. I'll be sharing the feedback form soon. so feedback is like a food for the winners so i request everybody to share your valuable feedback also i'll be sharing the quiz it has only 10 questions please spare 5 minutes for it and uh, thank you everyone thank you